Hello and welcome to Catalyze Music Academy. My name is Zach Christeter and I'm an Ableton Certified Trainer. And today I want to talk about a question that I was asked in a stream a little while ago that I thought was actually really interesting and worth taking a look at, which is what is the difference between the EQ8 and the auto filter and which situations would you use one or the other? Because they both have very similar functionality, but slightly different feature sets and different situations where you would apply them. Before we dive too deep into it, I do want to let you know if you are enjoying the content on the channel, please feel free to subscribe. I release videos every Monday as Thursday, as well as streaming here on YouTube on Tuesdays and Fridays. If you're already a subscriber, please feel free to hit the comment button and like button and all that stuff that really helps out the channel quite a bit. So diving right into it, if we just take a look at the differences between the EQ8 and the auto filter, they're functionally kind of the same. They're both EQs. They're both going to allow you to either increase or decrease specific frequencies. So for example, if we take an EQ8 and we, we take something like a low pass filter here on this drum beat, we can move this around and we can obviously hear that is turning down the high frequencies while leaving the lows. And if I were to try to do something very similar on the auto filter, it's going to sound basically exactly the same. They're kind of doing the same thing there. The way I look at it, the EQ8 is more designed for fixing things. It's more of a utility. It's more of just kind of like you want to be very specific, very precise. It's more of like a scalpel where you want it to make things sound exactly the way you want it to. Whereas the auto filter is going to be more for fun. It's going to be more for purposely changing frequencies to make them sound differently to either make motion or movement over time or to just make things purposely sound very, very different. So EQ8 is going to be more for subtlety and mixing, whereas auto filter is more for obvious changes and kind of like more as an effect. So let's take a look at, at how we might do that. So for example, if we're using something like the EQ8, obviously we have eight different bands that we can choose to turn on or off, and we can use to emphasize specific frequencies or de-emphasize those frequencies. And we can be very precise about this by adjusting the Q or the resonance. So we can just turn down very specific frequencies or boost very specific frequencies. On top of that, we can mix and match all the different filter types we have here. We got our low passes, we got our shelves, we got our band pass, um, we got all kinds of things we can do here. Mostly you kind of like figure out what you want to emphasize and what you want to de-emphasize, and then you can kind of just leave it there. And that's kind of what it does. Usually I don't do this a lot during the production stage of making music. Usually I try to save a lot of this till when I'm mixing and I'm really trying to get into like the nitty gritty details of exactly how I want my sound to sound and make sure I'm clearing enough room in my mix to hear everything nice and clear. That's really kind of the like functionality of the EQ8. Very more like subtle, precise, just leave it there and you're good. Whereas the auto filter, we're really kind of limited to one filter at a time, although we can change our filter type between a low pass, high pass, band pass, notch, and this morphing filter, which if you haven't tried is really cool because you can take this knob and switch between all the different filter types, which is pretty cool. Uh, however, this is really easy to automate. So for, say for example, I wanted this drum beat to fade away over time. I could again, take something like that and automate it. So if I go in here, show my automation, and just do something like this. Really easy, only takes like two seconds. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that automation by just right clicking on it and hitting delete automation. Now, theoretically, I could do the same thing here, not just theoretically, actually, I could do the exact same thing here. Uh, but this is really easy because it's only one knob and it's really hard to screw it up and it's just kind of built in, quick, easy, works really well. The other thing that is really nice about the auto filter is there's a few other built-in features that you're not going to get on the EQ8. So for example, you have a built-in LFO. So this is going to automatically attach to the filter frequency, which means my filter frequency is going to be moving up and down at the rate that I set right here and the shape that I set right here. So you won't see the filter moving, but you'll hear it. You hear it getting quieter and louder as that filter moves up and down. We can make it faster. So again, great for creating this like motion or movement when a filter, which again, I could do here, but it would take a lot of automating and be kind of a pain. The two other features that are worth noting in terms of the auto filter versus the EQ8 is it has a built-in sidechain. So you can have another audio signal add motion or movement to your filter frequency, which is kind of cool. There's also these built-in analog modeling modes. So these are different modes designed to sound like different analog filters to try to get you that kind of like old school analog sound. Uh, so they sound a little different. And depending on how you have this set up, if you were to like even switch to some of these, you can actually see the slope 
of the resonance as well as the cutoff here changes a little bit. And uh, also on top of that, you also get a drive control. So if you turn this up, it's going to add more volume going into the filter, which adds more distortion, which adds to, again, the more kind of like analog nature of what's happening here. So if I turn this up, you hear it get louder, but also get a little crispier and a little distorted, which would be kind of cool. And that is not available on the EQ8. Uh, so those are the, the, the main differences. There are definitely a few more features on EQ8 that I'm not going to get into right now for the sake of brevity. Uh, but general rule of thumb is if you are going for really kind of like set it and forget it, like precise, detail-oriented mixing, EQ8 is going to be what you're going to go for. If you're just looking to fade something in or fade something out or make it move up and down or add more of like creativity to your filtering, Alt Filter is going to be the way to do it because it's super easy to do and it has a bunch of features built in specifically for that kind of modulation. So that's it. Hopefully you enjoyed watching that. If you've been you know, doing a lot of EQing and filtering for a long time, you probably already knew a lot of stuff, but uh, people have definitely been asking me about this. And I think it's important to kind of realize that like, there's tons of tools in live that do similar things. There's lots of distortions, there's lots of different kinds of effects that are similar, but might have slightly different applications. And it's important to talk about this. So hopefully you did enjoy watching that. If you did, uh, like I said earlier, please feel free to subscribe. You can also check out our website, catalyzedacademy.com for more info about classes and lessons and workshops that we offer. So Real quick and easy tip for this week, and hopefully I will see you again soon.